So what did we learn till now? We were going through some numbers, some strings, isn't it? Okay, we saw some basic uh, what we can do with numbers. Like in numbers, we don't have much options. What we do is we mostly uh, like remove the decimal part, take the whole number, but let's say 3.56. If I uh, use int, I can get the three, remove the decimal, or else I can do some plus minus mathematical operations, isn't it? Other than that, I don't have much options, okay? This is what we normally do with numbers. Nothing more than that. But when it comes to strings, we have a lot of things, isn't it? So I will not go into strings too much because we have to think about other data types as well, okay? So after two or three classes, we'll again come back to string methods. There is something like when a string means what? It is letters, let's say. We have a name, Ravi Teja. What do I do? It is in small letters. I have to make it capital letter. I have to make it small letter, isn't it? So those things will come under string methods, okay? Now we will try to have only a basic introduction of strings and then later on we'll come back, okay? When we learn the methods, okay? So now we went up to here. That means this F we saw, F string or the template literal, isn't it? Then we saw this repetition can be done using star. Hmm? Then we have seen this new line character, right? And we have seen concatenation as well using plus and also using this F, it becomes easy. We don't need to use those plus and all, okay? No. So, <clears throat> so at that, that day, I forgot one small thing. Like uh, before going to string, let me discuss that now only. So when we write some code, uh, let me take a file. So three dot py. Okay. When I create some code, when I write some code, what uh, is very important in any programming language is comments. What is the meaning of comments? We tell whenever we are writing something, we tell that what we are doing in this line. Okay, let's say I take a variable called num is equal to zero. Okay, then I wrote uh, sum is equal to num plus 34. Okay, so what is the meaning of this line? This In this line, we are, this is known as initializing. We are starting we are initializing a variable called a num with the value zero we are initializing a variable with the value zero so that part i can write as a comment what i am lining in each line i can explain okay so let me write like this i will write initializing a variable with zero but if i write like this this is not a comment. This is taking, uh, Python is taking this as an error. So for that, we have to put a hash here. When I put a hash, it becomes a comment. So every language will have their own comment syntax. Everywhere in some language, this hash may be some star. Here it is hash. Somewhere it may be less than symbol, greater than symbol, something like that. Okay. Somewhere it may be slash, anything. So. In Python, the standard is hash. We have to always use hash. Now, this kind of comment is known as, so here, what will I write? Hash adding 34 to num. Okay. This is the meaning of this line. So that meaning I am writing in the form of a comment. Okay. Now, these kind of comments are known as single line comment. Because only one comment I am having. Let's say, now I want to write something like more lines. Let's say, I'll write, next, you can use the num wherever you want. This is one comment. Then I write another comment. But be careful not to change the value of num. 
I'm giving two instructions now in two different comments. Okay. So in this thing, we are using two single line comments. So this way, if I have a big paragraph, I have to write hash, 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 hash so many times, right? 10 lines mean 10 hash I have to put. Instead of that, we can use a multi-line comment. Okay. How this can be done? Multi-line comment is done. We will not use hash. We will use quotes. We have uh, what it is called double quotes or single quotes three times. And at the end, again, three times. Okay. This three times quote is known as multi-line comment. Okay. One time quotes means it is a string. Two times is not valid. Three times is comment. So in this, you can use single quote as well as double quote. See, instead of double quote, a uh, single quote, I'll write now double quote. This is also a comment. But this is a multi-line comment this is a single line comment this is the difference okay fine now let us go back to our strings so let me rename this file more st or let me write strings more okay so here we have seen how we are joining the strings and all those things now we will see something more so let me take a string let's say um, city is equal to hyderabad city equal to hyderabad city is a variable where hyderabad string is stored okay now this hyderabad string uh, is having so many letters can you see we are having so many letters how many letters one two three four five six seven eight nine letters are there okay now these letters are having some position. What is there in the first position? In the whole string? H is there. Isn't it? Second position, Y is there. So we have some position in the string. Okay. So these positions are known as index in Python. They are known as index. So, and the index always start from zero. So, First position means it is not 1, it is 0. Sec after 0, 1. What is there at 1? Y. Okay. So this way we can have the index. So let me try to print something. Print. And how do I write that? That position is written as city of 0. What is there in city of 0? H. City of 1 is Y. Okay. So let me try to print this. Print city of zero. So save this and uh, I write here py strings more dot py. Okay. What did I get? H. If I write here city of two, what I will get? D. Okay. This way, if I want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 is again the last D. Okay. Okay. So this way, we can know the, <clears throat> we can uh, know the letter or the character at a particular position. If I write here 6, I get b okay fine because b is at position 6 so it will start from 0 and it will end at some last position now so what is the last one it is 8 if i put here 9 what will happen 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 only 8 are there 0 to 8 but if i put 9 and check what do i get we are getting index error okay so this index whatever i am trying to use it is going out of range string index out of range why it is going out of range because the range is 0 to 8 and i am trying to access 9 it will give us error okay so for that we should always know what is the last position if we don't know that then it will be a big problem we may get some errors okay so how do we know so for that to know the last position, I must know how many letters are there. 
if there are three letters then what is the last position two because it will start from zero zero one two if there are ten letters then means zero to nine if there are five hundred that means zero to four ninety nine ah so first we need to know the total number of characters in the string so for that we have a method called length okay so it is written as i l e n l e n of whatever string string is city this will give us the number of characters in the string so if let me do something like print l e n of city hmm? if i save this and uh, run i'll get nine nine characters are there that means what will be the last one nine minus last will be, last index will be eight total nine are there total nine are there that means it is start from zero to nine if it is 500 it will be zero to four nine nine so it is zero to eight so if i want to know the last character i have to use minus one on this length so let's say I want to print the last character. So alien of city is giving me nine. So I have to write city of city of alien of city minus one. Is it correct? Alien of city means what? Nine. Nine minus one is what? Eight. And I am doing city of eight. Are you getting it? Alien of city is nine. Nine minus one is eight. That 8 I am passing to square bracket. City of 8. City of 8 will give us D. Last character. Okay. If I directly write alien of city, what will happen? Alien is 9. But city of 9 will give us index error. Because we cannot access that. It is going out of range. So alien of city minus 2. That means 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 means I will get A. Not a, okay, I didn't save. Mm -hmm. Achha. Still not saved. Ha, huh. we got A. Okay, this is how we know the length, we know the position. This is how we have to calculate it. Okay, that's fine. Now, there are some things like so. Let me now print all these things. I am able to print city of 2. I am getting the output. Indeed. So this way, it is going from 0 to 8. Fine. That is totally correct. But we also have negative indexes. These are all positive values I am using. 2, 3, 4. These are plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Right. I can use negative index as well. Minus 0 if I write. Minus 0 is same as plus 0. We will get the same output. H. But what about minus 1? We will get the last value starting from minus one that means minus two will give us minus two will give us a minus five will give us one two three four five r we should get r this way python will accept python will support positive as well as negative index okay fine now what more can be done with this indexes so there is something called slicing what is the meaning of slicing cutting we can cut the string into different parts using this index i say that please zero index to four index cut that part okay if i do like that i will i should get h y d e r something like that right i want only h y d then 0, 1, 2 I want. Right? If I want only H, Y, D, that means I have to tell Python that please cut from 0 to 2. 0, 1, 2. Right? This thing is known as slicing. So, these strings will support slicing. as. Okay. Let us now see how to do that. So, it is something like we use a square bracket like this and we write one number that is the starting index from where I want to start and I put a colon and then I put the ending index. So if I write here 0, 4, 
what should happen and again i have to write here not like this ct of 0 comma 4 ah this is the correct ct of we were writing ct of 0 ct of 1 ct of 2 ct of 3 right but here i am writing ct of 0 colon 4 that means cut the characters from 0 to 4 okay but there is a small problem here what it does is it will not include the ending index what is the ending index i am using 4 so it will not include the 4 it will go up to 3 that means 0 1 2 3 okay 0 1 2 3 it will go like that so let me save this and print this value if i don't print i will not get the output so print ct of 0 comma 4 so that means i should get 0 1 2 3 h y d e right i should get h y d e so let me run this what did i got what did i get h y d e it is not including the 4 going up to 3 if i write here 0 comma 8 what will happen h y d e r a b a because last one is 8 and it is not including the 8 isn't it Last index is 8. Yeah. Now, if I put a wrong index here, what will happen? 0, 9. 9 index is not there. Only 0 to 8 it is there. In the normal indexing, we saw that it was giving us error. Isn't it? So, what will happen here? Here, we will not get any error. What it will do? It will, uh, if that index is not there, it will not take it. Up to where whatever is there that we will get so if i write 0 comma 9 i'll get the whole string oh i didn't save it mm. okay so just check this so i got the whole thing so if i write here 0 comma 100 there is no problem it will go up to the length and then it will ignore so here i'll get again either Okay, I'm getting the full string. Okay, this is how it works. Now, let's say I want from D to A. Then what do I do? D to A. So starting position is? Starting is 2, 0, 1, 2. Uh, D is 2. H is 0, Y is 1, D is 2. So I'll write here. 2 and up to how much I want? D E R A, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is A, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is A, but 5 will not be included. I have to write 6 so that up to 5 I will get. Okay? If I write here 2, comma 5, what will happen? Starting from D E R A. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is A. But 5 will not be included. So, I'll get a DER only. See here, I'll get DER only. But if I want DERA, I have to get, give one more index. Index plus 1. So, 2, comma 6. I got DERA. Okay. This way, we can put. What about here, some out of range values? Minus 4. Minus 4 means it will not start from before H. Minus 4 means D, A, B, A. Okay. And going up to 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is B. That means A to B. But B again I am not including. Because it is 6. So it will give only A. Are you getting it? Only A I am getting. Okay. So this way. Minus 4 to 8. What is the meaning? Minus 4 means D, A, B, A. It will start from A. And 8 means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 means D will not be included. So A to A, B, A I will get. Oh, sorry. Save. I get A, B, A. Okay. This is how this slice works. But there are some more things in slice. Let's say I didn't give two values. I gave only one value. Two colon only. What is the meaning? 
2 means starting position is 0, 1, 2, so D. When I not give any value, that means go up to last. Okay, 2 colon, only 2 colon means D to D, it will give. Save this and run it, D to D, there are bad. If I write here, 0 colon something, that means I will get full, whole string. Okay, if I write here, 7 colon nothing, I will get AD. Okay, fine. In the same way, I can also remove the first value and give some second value. Let's say 5. That means start from the beginning. No value means start from the beginning. 2, 5, but not 5, up to 4. 0 to 4. Means HYDE, I should get HYDE. Oh, what happened? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, yes. 4 means R. A is 5, right? Yeah. So this is how this slicing will work. Okay, these two things are there. Now let me write something. A small out of the box thing I want to show you. City of this comma 5 and 5 colon nothing. What is the meaning of these two lines? First meaning is from the starting to port position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It will not include the 5, right? up to r and what is the meaning of this thing five colon this zero one two three four five from a to last isn't it so if i join these two things i'll get the whole string can you see so if i write here city of this plus this city of colon five plus five colon it will give us the whole string. You got the whole string. Okay. Here what is happening? We are not including the fifth index. It is going up to four. But fifth is included by this part up to the end. So this way we are getting the whole string. Okay. Okay. This is how we can play with indexes. Okay. So this is about the slicing and indexing okay now now let us see some more things like we know that we can uh, access the values using this syntax right we can access the fifth index using city of this square bracket syntax okay i am getting a okay fine so what happens is there's a concept that we cannot change the values let's say if i want to do something like city of zero what is city of zero is h if i write city of zero is equal to t if i write city of zero equal to t what will happen i am trying to change the zero index value to t instead of h y d e i want t y d e if i try to do this it will not do anything. Let us see. After doing this, print city. What will happen here? It will not change the city. What it is saying? STR type error. STR object does not support item assignment. Okay. The string object doesn't support item assignment. That means we cannot change the value of a character in the string. This is known as immutability. We cannot mutate. What is the muta meaning of mutate? We cannot change a string. We can replace a string, but we cannot change a string. If I want to change one letter in the string, I cannot do that. But what I can do is I can change the whole string into like this. I have to write something like this. I have to forcefully write it again. Only then I can get print city if i do this i will get here the new string so this whole string needs to be replaced with a new string otherwise there is no other option okay this is known as immutable the string immutable now fine okay <clears throat> then so this is all about string i want to tell you later on we will come into the methods like 
what else can be changed we cannot change the first letter to t that is fine but i can make the first letter capital or else all capital or else all small letter this can be done using methods okay so something like ct dot lower what will happen here or okay already it is in lower ct dot upper what will happen here uh -huh. it is not working okay we'll see that these things how to uh <clears throat> i think it will not change the original string mm. Mm. see what is happening here city dot upper city dot lower this way some methods are there which will help us to change the so it is not changing the original string but it is doing it here so these things i will discuss in string methods not now okay because we have some more important things to discuss then we'll go to number methods string methods and all those things okay now so this is all about strings now let us go to another file what i will do there is okay let it be here so i'll create a new file mm, that means boolean dot py okay so we have seen numbers and string but we have another data type that is known as boolean what is the meaning of boolean have you heard the word boolean boolean means true or false isn't it but here they don't write so in python everything is short okay for string they don't write s t r i n g they write only s t r number they write number fine again for boolean they don't write b o o l e a n they only write b o o l bool bool means boolean okay so let's say i have a variable called g is equal to true but this true syntax is wrong can you see it should be capital t sorry it should be capital t g is equal to true now what i do here print type of g print a type of g so i want the data type of g what do i get here i get here uh what happened okay i am running the old file so py boolean dot py okay so what did i get class bool that means it is a boolean value okay type of g is boolean value now this boolean value i am storing forcefully like g equal to true i am writing i can write f is equal to false isn't it this way i can store the boolean value now is this the only way that uh, we get some true false value from something there are many other ways when where we can get the true false values okay so let me write something let me have a variable less is equal to two less than three when i write like this what happens two less than three or else let me do one thing i dot print type of g if i write here print four less than five what is the meaning four less than five this line actually this this what it is called this is known as an expression okay it is an expression this expression what it is telling us so first we need to know what is an expression what is the statement okay two things are there this whole line is known as a statement here g is an expression true is an expression so let me take the true is an expression and we are using this equal to this equal to is known as an operator it is known as an assignment operator using this assignment operator what i am doing i am putting this true value to g and this true this value is an expression okay so and this whole thing line is known as a statement so whatever code i am writing let's say 10 lines are there that means we have 10 statements each statement will have some expression 
operator may be there, may not be there. This line is having an expression 4 less than 5, but there is no assignment operator. Okay. And this whole line is a statement, print statement. This is the print statement is having an expression. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of expression? Expression is something which gives us some value. This expression, what value it is giving us? True. This expression is giving us false. In the same way, this expression is also giving us something. What is it? When I write like this, we are asking Python, is this true or false? 4 less than 5. Is it true or false? True? It is totally true, right? If I write here, 5 greater than 90. Is it true or false? False. So this way, this expression is telling us something true or false, isn't it? So this expression is known as a Boolean expression. This is also a Boolean expression. Let me have something like num is equal to 45. This 45 is giving us some value. This 45, that is a number numeric expression. This is a Boolean expression. When I write sum is equal to 21 plus 21. What is this? This is an expression. Okay. This expression is giving us 42 as a value. So all expressions will always give us some value. Some expressions are ready-made. Like this is readily giving us true. This is giving us readily false. This one is directly giving us 45. But this is not giving us directly 21 plus 21. It is giving us 42 actually. In the same way, 5 greater than 90 is also not ready-made. It is giving us false, 5 greater than 90. So, what Python will do is, it will try to get the value directly. If it is not able to get the value directly, it will evaluate. It will calculate the expression. Okay, whenever we write some cal uh, expression, it will first calculate the expression. So, when I write 21 plus 21, Python will first calculate 21 plus 21 is 42. Then it will give me the 42 value. Okay. The same way, this expression is also evaluated. Okay. So, these kind of expressions, Boolean expressions, can also give us Boolean value. So, print 5 greater than 90. What it is giving us? It is giving us false. Okay. This way, Python is able to evaluate. Okay. Now, these Boolean expressions, we, need, we can use it in many ways. Okay. So, if I write here directly print f of uh, print of f is this f a boolean expression yes or no is it boolean what is f what is f can you see the f somewhere in the whole code yes so it is having false that means this f is a boolean expression it is giving us boolean value no so f is also a boolean expression so i can print and i get false if i pass here g this g is also a boolean expression and i get true if i write here num this is not a boolean expression it is a numeric expression so i get number okay okay this way we can have something like this now these boolean expressions let's say I write here num greater than sum. What is the meaning? What is num? What is sum? 42. So what I am asking is num greater than sum? 45 greater than 42. It is true. So this will definitely give us a boolean value. It will not give any numbers in the output isn't it so let us see what did i get true if i write here num less than sum what do i get 45 less than 42 is false so this way we can get boolean values okay and these boolean values will help us to check a lot of things it is helping us to check now if num is greater than sum uh, then we will decide something if num is smaller than sum, then we can decide to do something else. Okay. So these Boolean expressions 
will be used by us to create conditions. If num is greater than sum, then print hello. If num is less than sum, print hi. Okay. So in that thing, what we have to do, we have to use these kind of Boolean expression. Because according to this Boolean expression, we have to do something. Isn't it? There comes the topic called if else. Hmm. So in the if else, what we need is we need a Boolean expressions. And these Boolean expressions we use in if else as a condition. This is the condition. If num is less than sum, then do this. If num is greater than sum, do that. Okay. Okay. So now we will jump over to if else. So Boolean you understood, right? Okay. Let us now move forward to if else. Let me create a file if else dot py. Okay. So have you seen any if else earlier? We write something like in other languages we put if and then we put parentheses and then we write some condition here like one less than three. But Python is very simplified. We don't write so many things. Okay. So what do I write? I write if and then space and then the expression. What is the expression I want? One less than two. And then I put a colon like this. And I press enter. And see automatically uh, it has come here. This is because I have installed the Python ex uh, extension. Okay. If it is not coming, you have to press tab and create the space. Okay. If I don't put like this and I start writing x equal to 10 this is giving me error okay so what i have to do i have put a space like this then i do something okay let me do something like print if one is less than two i print hello i'm putting string okay print hello so is this working let us see what do i write py if else dot py Okay, I'm, I got the output. Hello. Okay. If one, okay. If 55 less than two, what is happening here? It, we are getting the expression as false. So if it is false, it will not execute this line. Isn't it? If it is true, only then this line will be executed. So it all depends on this expression, this Boolean expression. If I put here 23, what will happen? Because we saw that 23 is not a Boolean expression. But if you see, when you write run this code, we are getting the hello. What is happening? When I don't have the if and I directly want to print 23, 23 plus 45 or uh, some number like only 21, what happens is we get the number. But when I put it in the if statement, this line is the if statement when i put anything inside the if it will first convert this into boolean value okay now 23 is converted to true but if i put here zero and i run this code i don't get anything because zero is known is converted to false okay so for that we need to know something called truthy value and falsy value that means true values and false values okay so what do i do is i cannot show you directly here i think uh, let me check is there a boolean method is not there okay bool method is there let me check once print bool of 34 True. Print bool of zero. False. Okay. So using this thing, I can show you. So what is happening here? Whatever I'm passing in this, this bool is a method and it is taking a value. This value, it will first try to convert that value into Boolean value, whatever it is. Let's say if I write here six less than seven, it is already Boolean value. Six less than seven is true. So I'll get true in the output. But what happens if I put here 45 45 is a true value it is true value okay so 
and if I pass here minus 98 then also I get true so all numbers except 0 are true 0 is the only number which is false okay so if I write here bool of 0 what do I get I get false okay so this way we have to know which values are true which values are false so that's why when I write here an if condition like this what is happening the zero is treated as false so whatever I write in the if statement that will first be converted into boolean value then it will do the remaining lines okay so if I write here 77 this is always true I'm getting hello if I put here 0 minus 0 these are all falsy values I don't get anything okay fine now what is this doing if 2 less than 3 print hello okay that means if 2 less than 3 is true then print hello but we don't have an else condition here else statement here if 2 is less than 3 then do this if not then we have to have an else also so what how do i write that here i press enter and i don't go to this indentation i go back again and i write else see at this point if i write x equal to 6 this is not correct okay it is not giving us error but it is not inside the if that means okay if we want so let's say print not uh, a b c now if i make this condition false 5 less than 2 it is false 5 less than 2 is false but it is not printing hello but it is printing the a b c so when i write something without indentation it will take it as outside the if not inside the if it will not treat it as it is inside the if but if i put a tab here and now print i will not get anything because the value is false isn't it if i write 5 less than 6 i get both the lines okay hello and abc okay fine now let us see i want one else condition now so how do i write i don't give the indentation i come here because if i write else again it will be wrong syntax so i have to write here else again colon and press enter with indentation i have to write print hi what will happen now save it and run this five less than six is true that's why it is printing hello if i write five less than one it is false so it will not print this hello it will come to the else part and it will print hi so here you have to notice one thing very carefully when i write here five less than seven when the condition is true it is always executing this line and it is it will never go to the else if this part is true it will never go to the else so now we get only hello not hi when this value is false it will never come to this line and it will go to else part okay so it will print high so only one can happen both will never happen if you have written it properly if your syntax is okay if both are getting executed if you are getting both that means your syntax is wrong that you have to keep in mind whenever you are getting both means something you have wrong like uh, indentation you have given wrong or something okay okay fine this is about if else and as you have seen this indentation is important now there is another thing called spacing now whenever we are writing all these things the next line i should not write from here let's say x equal to 10 what it will think it will think this is part of the else in the else they will do this line also this line also okay either you start it from here this is better and the best way is to give a space here okay if you give a space here that is the best way whenever you are writing something okay 
the space if you put this space even if you have some indentation there is no problem okay but if you don't have the space and you by mistake gave the indentation suppose there is no space and you gave the indentation it will take it as else let's say i will write here print okay if i write here okay and five less than one is false it will now print both the lines save this and run the code i'm getting high and okay but if i give a space here it will think that the print OK is not part of the else. It will, uh, <clears throat> how do I say? Mm, OK, let me go to this thing. Huh. Five less than six. So what is happening here? Here, the print OK is treated as a part of the else. So five less than six means it is true. It will execute this line. And it will not execute these two lines because these two are part of the else. Only hello is printed. But if I give a space here, it will print only hello. What happened? Are you still taking it as else? Yes, it is still taking it as else. Hmm. So that means indentation is also very, very important. You should not put it anywhere. So this indentation is creating problem here. So what we have to do, what we have to keep in mind when we come out of an if or else, we have to first, it is better to remove the indentation and give a space this space is recommended by python that is not told by me or some person this uh, extra line extra enter i have pressed right this is recommended by python only python organization they themselves have told that please put a gap after else and then start it from a new line and start it from here okay this indentation again it will create problem if i put indentation here so we have to be very careful with spaces and indentations. Okay, fine. Now, now let us go to another scenario of if else. I will conclude the class with this. So here, let's say, I will try to solve something from here. Let us go to edupoly.com or edupoly.in, wherever you want to go. We just click on these assignments. I hope uh, that day I gave some assignments, right? Yeah, so here I'll go to the statement and loops. Okay, these are all JavaScript assignments, but same thing you can do with if uh, Python also. Okay, now let us see. I'll do something like okay. I'll discuss this later on because these are these assignments we'll see in the next class. Okay, here I want to just I want to give you a scenario actually when we have something like let's say a equal to 100 is there okay if a oh sorry if a greater than 10 if a greater than 9 that means what if a is greater than 9 that means it is a two digit number is it if any number is greater than 9 means it is a two digit number right Yes, ha. Huh. But uh, if anything is greater than nine, is a two-digit number fine? But hundred is also greater than nine. Is it a two-digit number? No. So what do I do? If a greater than nine, okay. Let me take it as a different thing. Uh, if a less than nine, if a is less than nine, that means what? It is a less than 10 sorry mm. if a less than 10 it is a single digit number okay forget about negative values mm. up to zero it means it is single digit number okay now <clears throat> i'll print here print if a less than 10 print it is 
single digit. Okay, fine. If it is less than 10, then it is single digit. Else, else means else means what? When this will become false. When a is not less than 10, that means what? A is greater than 10. A is not less than 10 means what? Greater than 10. 100 percent sure. Uh, if a is greater than 10, then what do I print? If a is greater than 10, it may be two digit number or three digit also. So in the else again, I have to use conditions. Else, if a less than 100, it is two digit number. a greater than 10 is false. Uh, sorry, a less than 10 is false. So it is going to else, which is a greater than 10. And a greater than 10, but less than 100. That means it is a... It is two digit number. Right? Then what other conditions we have? A greater than... A less than 100 is two digit number. Then again, I can have if a less than 1000, it is three digit number. Print. It is three digit number. Okay. Now let us see what I am getting in the output. I got it is three digit number because I have written here 100. If I write here 4, I get single digit. If I write here 45, I get Uh, it is going to two conditions. Uh, so I have to write here another else. Else. And then I have to put one indentation here. Uh, now I will get two digit number. Mm. What is happening here? If A is less than 10, I am printing it is single digit. If A is not less than 10, A is greater than 10. Then again I have to check. If A is less than 100, greater than 10 and less than 100, it is two digit number. No, it is not less than 100. Again, we have to check for if it is less than 1000, it is three digit number. This way we have to check. So this type of approach we are having in other languages. Okay. What we will, what we have here in Python is that we have a short syntax. Instead of this else if, else if how many times it is coming two times instead of writing else if we write something called elif e l i f elif means else if they have made it short very peculiar you will not find it in other languages okay so what i will do here ah okay again So, unintended amount does not make previous in that. Okay. So, this will come here. What happened? Let me check. So, if then else if is this and then uh, so this should come here. Uh, so, this whole thing is okay, but expected expression okay let me check what happened here is it able to print this it is a two digit number okay then uh so i have to again go for will i write here no else if this so we don't have else if chaining that means if i write here else if a less than thousand then i print it is a three digit number okay fine now let us see i'm getting two digit because it is 45 i write 345 i get three digit this is how we have to write 
then if I have only three, we get it is a single digit. Okay, this is how we have to use the if else that chaining is okay, but it will become so big, right? When we write if else again inside else, if we write if else, but this syntax is very small. When we have lot of conditions, then we can go like this. So this if is the parent of this else. So after if condition is failed, it will go to this else, else if. Again, if this condition fails, this will go to this one. So these two are actually inside this if. But we write in this way, in a compact form. Okay, fine. So that's it. That's it about conditions. We'll practice some examples in the next class. But try to go through these questions little bit. What can be done? We'll discuss these problems only in the next class. No need to worry. But you try on your own what have what is happening here. What should be the logic? But we'll discuss the and in our next class. This is our work. Okay. Okay. So we'll complete the if else, else if all kind of possibilities in the next class. Okay. What kind of conditions? Actually, we are okay with if else we are getting, but these conditions will be different. What kind of condition we should write? Okay, that's it. That's it for this session.